it's Friday. Friday newsletter time, guys. So we will, um, uh, everything's going well. Hope you guys are all doing good. Uh, hope you have a great weekend. So we are going to get into this. This is going to be um, reviews on a couple different things. Um, first of all, on some material that we got, it, it, this is, it's kind of becoming a trend. You guys that know that I, that we're kind of limited in what we can use have been sending in some, um, some different kinds of woods to get us to try and uh, I'm having a blast with it, really having a lot of fun. So today we're, uh, working with some cypress that Mark Phelps sent us. So we've got, uh, here's what I carved in this, he sent us three pieces like this of the live edge uh, cypress which I really like it's very cool um, have uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and carve exactly what I carved here I'm gonna set up and, and surface and carve it so the first thing that we that uh, the issue that we kind of had with this stuff and that mark I don't know if if it was this way when you sent it to us but this stuff tends to or the pieces that we got tend to have a develop kind of a cup they were sitting by our I don't know can you get that down does yeah. that show up coming in right yeah it had kind of a cup to it which um, it, it can be some that can be kind of an issue now what dad did is he took a piece of it ran it through our uh, abrasive planer and uh, and flattened it out and the neat thing is this has got plenty of thickness so it's still plenty of thick makes a nice nice sign so and it hasn't really cupped since he did that, uh, I don't know, you did that a couple weeks ago, I think. Yeah, it's been about three weeks. Yeah, so um, so that one's ready to carve, but I wanted to show you that if you have a planer, you can run it through a planer if you want it flat, um, or we've got an abrasive drum sander, abrasive planer, basically. But <clears throat> it comes rough. Here's a piece that I'm going to work with today. It's got a rough surface to it. So what I'm going to do... Show it from the end. Oh, yeah. You can see, and all three of them, or these two at cup, that one was cupped, but Dad fixed it. About there, Dad? Down a little further. No, okay, now raise it up. Okay. Like that? Yeah. Okay. So, um, here's, what, here's what I did. Now, here's a, an alternative, if you don't have a planer, is this little hand plane that I showed, that I worked uh, with, I think on an LTS a couple two, three, four weeks ago, something like that. So you got, if you've got one of these little hand planers, I used this yesterday, and I actually surfaced the back side of this board, and it's not exactly flat, but it's a heck of a lot flatter on this side than it is on this side, because I just, I just took the planer and I went on this edge, this edge, <clears throat> and then just took my rough belt sander and kind of somewhat sanded it down. So that certainly is workable if you want it flat. Now, bottom, uh, bottom line, if you're working with the surface of the board, like I'm going to be on there and here with a crown in the center, so you've got that surface to work with, like I always talk about, if you do have a cup, from this far away, you guys wouldn't even know that that's a cupped board. Um, so, you know... No, or anybody else wouldn't know that. Exactly. Once you get two or three feet away, what, what difference does it really make? Um, if you want flat, you can make it flat. But, you know, if you're working with the front side with a crown and that router base will follow that, uh, that contour, then who really cares? It's a live edge sign anyway. So, it, you know, it's, it looks more like a plank, maybe, if it has a little cup to it. So, anyway, that's something to think about as well. Don't think it has to be absolutely flat in order to make a nice sign but out. But if it's not, you need to work with the, with the outside rather than the inside. That's correct, yeah. If, it, if you do want it flat or you do want to use it with a cup on it, definitely use this side, not this side, unless you flatten it out. Now, the way I flatten this one out, it's somewhat workable. I can work with it. Um, if you don't have a planer, you can use the hand plane, or it, it's a longer process, but you could sand it all down on the edges. So, um, so Dad, you want to take this hand plane out of the way here? Just put that on the bench over there. So now, here's what I'm going to do. Here's our piece that we're going to work with, and again, it's got that big cup to it. So I'm going to, but I'm, I'm not going to surface it because of that. I'm going to surface it because it's, it's, uh, it's rough. And I just don't want, uh, 
I don't want to mess with it when it's rough. So I've got a second review that I'm going to do today. I have a new sander that I've been playing with. We got this over in, uh, in Las Vegas at Woodworkers Emporium. And this is a little Porter Cable, I don't, we call it the Armadillo. But it's basically, it's a model 371 and it's uh, two and a half by 14. Cute little belts. And I'll tell you what, guys, I really like this thing. It works really, really well. Just got to make sure my, my belt is going the, the right direction. And let's see, do it that way. Um, but yeah, it's a really neat little sander. Belt goes on and off really easy. You no, know, it does. And it tracks really well. So that's all there is to it. It's got a really neat little... So I'm, gonna, I'm using this for my finished sand. I'm going to go ahead and sand the surface of this first with my, my rough, and then I'm going to go back with the armadillo and uh, sand it. So I've got my 36 grit. I think this is a 36 grit on my regular skill. I'm just going to sand uh, most of this down and then smooth it down with the armadillo. just put a little bit better smooth on that so the on and off switch is right there and you can hold it any number of different ways I tend to kind of hold it here that's a little quieter than that skill too oh yeah yeah, quite a bit quieter. And it does a really good job. I didn't think I would like it when I first saw it. I really thought I wouldn't like it. It was too uh, different. Yeah, it was too different and it looked too much like a toy. <laughs> that I really didn't think I was going to like it. But actually, that's a neat little sander. I, I highly recommend them. I'm going to switch over uh, both my sanders to those. Can you have me that brush over there, Dad? I forgot to put that over here. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to... That's plenty smooth enough for me to rub my hands on when I'm uh, doing my... doing my carb, my routing on there. I think I'll route up here where that... Uh, kind of that those dark pieces are so let me just draw a line uh oh I forgot my pencil again I knew but I was I knew you'd have one dad never leave the shop without it so I'm just doing this guys pretty pretty quickly here I lost my Y <laughs> oh I thought I had a, a Y but evidently I don't so we're gonna go Cypress <laughs> we don't edit, guys. We just roll. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I lost my Y. <laughs> All right, so there we go. We'll make these outset letters like we did on the on the sample. Oh, I, I'll need that for a second. All right, so let's just spray that real quick. And I did find out too, guys. And I'll get into this once I spray my carving. That um, no need for, uh, at least in my experience so far, no need for the um, the sanding sealer on this stuff. This stuff doesn't doesn't bleed like the like the pine does. I didn't have I didn't see any any sign of that at all. So we are going to let that dry for a minute. And then when we come back, we'll uh, be set up with our routers and we'll do some routing. See you in a minute. All right, guys, we are back. So our ink is dried or our paint. So I'm just going to draw some lines top and bottom like we normally do. 
give dad back his pencil so we don't lose track of it there you go dad all right so now we are going to fire this up i'm going to put my magnifiers on and we're going to fire up the router so like normal i'm going to make these outset letters so i have got the profile bit our regular standard profile bit that most everybody should know about if you don't let me know we'll tell you all about it so uh, they can probably find a video somewhere that explains yeah that. they might be able to find a video <laughs> We have a playlist that's n about nothing but router bits, so tons of information on there. All right, so let's do some routing. Ah, here we go. It does. It throws up a nice chip. It's, it, I don't know how dry it is. I haven't checked out the moisture content, but it certainly cuts like it's pretty dry. It throws a really nice chip. It clears out easy. It's a pretty nice aroma too. It's not cedar, but it's, yeah. a, it's a pretty nice aroma. It is. Um, the other thing is it's it reminds me a lot of cedar in the fact that it's very consistent, uh, not not real grainy. It carves really soft. And this is cypress wood. That must be uh, mostly from like down south. Yeah, I think um, if I remember right, I think Mark Phelps is from Georgia. But I, I do think that it's very uh, geographical that the cypress that I think of is all, almost all in the south. Yeah, I remember I lived in Florida as a kid and uh, there was a lot of cypress trees down there. Yeah. Well, and I've seen pictures of cypress trees growing in the swamp and stuff. That's why I wasn't sure that, that it would be applicable for signs because I figured it would have way too much water in it. But you can see how my router base is just following the contour of that the surface uh, and even though it's got a, got a cup to it, or an arch, I guess.
So like I say, guys, I like the way this stuff, this stuff cuts. Very consistent, nice and soft. The router bit just, just, and this, uh, um, my uh, profile bit not is not even very sharp, and it just kind of flies through it. Um, reminds me a lot of cedar. And kind of tip that up a little, so they yeah. just, just tip the edge of it. I believe that, yeah, yeah, that's that's good. So it it, uh, it has a consistency and a soft grain, much like cedar does. And you can see on that sample that I showed earlier, when this has just got one coat of the Krylon on it, and it almost looks like cedar once it's got the finish on it. You kind of the the Krylon really brings the grain out. It reminds me a lot of cedar. So let's do some cleanup on that. You doing all right on time, Dad? Oh yeah. Okay. Get my cords in. Unless you, unless you have to be somewhere else. Not currently. Later on, maybe. But not right now. Oh, my cords. That's going to have to be. All right. So we have our standard 90 degree V groove. That's a little bit deep. I'm going to have to readjust that depth on that. But that's our standard 90 degree for our background. As you guys will know. Did I carve that all right? With it? Was the cord in the way when I was carving that? No, I was fine. It was... Okay. Uh, I, I have a tendency to kind of watch you carve instead of watching the monitor. So oh. there was a time or two there when, when they wasn't seeing anything because I was watching you rather than the monitor and moving the camera. So, but you'll see that. You're going to have to dock your pay for that. Yeah, right. All right. I, get, I get fascinated by watching you carve. <laughs> Sounds familiar. All right, here we go. just for a second you guys saw if dad had the camera going there you guys saw that I hit that knot there and it kind of it kind of uh, made a divot there so I kind of recut it in fact it looks like I need to recut that a little bit more so that knot is all going to be black and in the background that's the neat thing about this cloud guys if you have to expand it a little bit you absolutely can do that
Okay, so as I was doing that, I was thinking about something else I needed to say. Last video, maybe the last one or even the one before that, you saw me doing this cleanup operation with the little um, the little DWP 611 or the Porter Cable 450, same thing. Um, and, and like I've been purporting for a long time, I don't really use those very often for cleanup unless it's just a little bit. So don't get confused on that. I still tr like to use the bigger router. This is the 618. I still like to use that or the, the Porter Cable uh, 690LR for the cleanup operation. It's just, it doesn't work these little routers because you're taking out so much wood, obviously. It doesn't work the heck out of these little routers. So keep that in mind. Always use the the bigger router if you have one uh, for that cleanup operation just because it's a lot of uh, wood taken out there you don't want to overwork that all right so let me see what we got here oh, there's a little piece right there I want to take out I don't have my little carving tool that's what I forgot but that's what? all right you want my knife then? oh I got my pocket knife on me I think I do Um, let's see. So I, I like the way this stuff cuts uh, on the cleanup operation. I really, actually, I like the, the the profiling a little bit better. I haven't cut inset letters with it, but I know if the... I don't like that. That's going to break my... Let's see your pocket knife. You've got more of a traditional pocket knife. I think it will work better. Yeah, that works a little bit better. The only reason I'm doing this, guys, in case you're kind of new to the channel, is that if I don't, oh, I do have one out here. Thank you, Dad. I didn't realize I had one out here. Oops. Don't, drop, don't drop that. I hope it didn't hit your foot. Uh, so the reason ah! <laughs> we don't have time to bleed. <laughs> uh, I love this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no time to bleed. Jesse Ventura said that. I think. Uh, anyway. So, the reason I do this is get down all the high spots to make sure that we don't have white spots, which is no, it's not a big deal, but I, I want the fewest amount of high spots when I go to sand that off. So, brush it real quick. If good. you do get a white spot, though, you just touch it with a Sharpie, That's right? That's exactly right. That's why I say it's not that critical. I just don't like to use the Sharpies too much. All right. So, let's... Now I will spray that. Can you get that down? No, on camera there. Well, in a minute. And this stuff doesn't bleed like pine, so nope. you don't have to I worry have, about at it. At least on that last one I carved it did, and we'll see in a few minutes when we sand this off, but that's pretty much it. That's good enough. We're going to let that dry. We'll be back in a minute. We'll sand that off, see what it looks like. Okay, guys, so let's finish this thing up, see how it comes out. So I do like the way this stuff works. If you guys have access to Cypress, um, if, it's, if it's anything like this stuff, I would definitely recommend it. So let's sand it off. So there's my rough sand. Like you, like you guys know, I take off about 80 to 90 percent. So now let's do the armadillo, see how it works. This is an 80 grit, guys, but you, they have 120. You can go down to 120 on it. So let's uh, blow this thing off. 
Can you get a good angle on that down or you want me to kind of block it up? Does that well, help? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. So let's blow this off. And I'm going to talk about this brush a little bit, guys. This brush, Dad taught me years and years and years ago that sometimes this stuff, when you blow it off, it'll have little tiny fuzzes on there. I don't know if that's going to happen, but let's take a look and see what it looks like. Yes, it does. So, and I don't know how tight you guys can see this, but there are little tiny hairs around here mostly and around sometimes around the letters. When you get that, if you've got a really soft brush like this, this is actually from a pool table. If you've got a really soft brush like this, you can take that off, but you have to be really, really careful. So here's what I do. I keep the air blowing on this. I clean this off with the air. And then as I brush this, I also have the air going on it at the same time. The reason for that is that any of the sawdust that comes off, it blows off and it doesn't, you're not scratching the surface of your black in there with the sawdust and the brush. So watch how I do this. So now you can see... Well, if I talk that to you, you learned it pretty good. Yeah, you can see it's a much sharper lines on there. There's not really... I, maybe a one little tiny deal there. But, but again, that's the way you want to do it. You want to have that air blowing on it, whether it's a vacuum with a blow uh, thing like that or an air hose, either one, uh, as you're really doing that light brush. That way it gets all that stuff out of there and it takes off all of those little hairs. And just a, a nice shoe brush would... Uh, yeah, would well that might there. be, I was thinking this was, but that might be a shoe brush. I think it is a shoe brush. It says, uh, made in Italy. You know, I think you're right. I think that is for, uh, for buffing up shoes. I think that's what it is. I was thinking of a pool yeah, brush. Our pool table brush was straight. Yeah, that probably is for a shoe then. Um, so that's pretty much it, guys. Again, if you have access, I have no idea what it costs, but if you have access and the availability for this Cypress, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan. I really, really like it. Now let's put a, put a finish on it real quick. We'll use the armadillo as a... I guess I just like to say armadillo. Armadillo, I like yeah. I like that. It's, it's, it's like word. some of the words I like to say, but I'm not, I'm not going to say Thank them. you. I appreciate that. I knew that was something like that. So see how it really makes that grain pop, guys? Wow. See how it really brings let me, that let grain Let me get out. it a little closer on that now. It really yeah. makes that grain pop out. And that's what reminds me, of, that's another reason it really reminds me of the cedar. Cedar looks kind of dull, and this stuff is the same uh, until you put that finish on. And uh, so that, I could set that out in the sun and be dry in 10, 15 minutes. I could throw some more on it. Um, the other thing was, you guys will notice that when I was carving with this router, I, at one point, I turned it around. That's because I, I never know which way I put the base on, but one way, this thing blows so much air that one way, it blows the air right in your face. So that's what it was doing at the beginning. That's why I turned it around so that it was blowing it away so it wasn't blowing it right in my eyes. So that's, uh, that's the one thing about the, the, this big router is it blows a lot of air in your face unless you turn it around. So that was, uh, that's why I did that. Okay, I think that's it, Dad. Um, any questions? Anything I'm leaving out? No. Anything you want to tell about next week or anything um, that's going on? Uh, tomorrow? Don't forget, tomorrow will be uh, one of Dad's um, uh, country music memories. I don't know, we still haven't really coined a phrase for that, but Dad, Dave's memories, I guess. Uh, so he'll be doing another one of those tomorrow morning. We'll actually film it tonight, I think, and then uh, post it in the morning. I think I'll do it on my Dolly Parton sign. Okay. Well, you know, the main reason I did Merle Haggard first is because he passed away, and it was, yeah. I wanted to kind of tribute to him, but uh, Dolly Parton's still my favorite. All right, so uh, tune in tomorrow morning. You'll hear all about Dolly. <laughs> That's a reason to tune in, if nothing else. So everybody had had two big reasons to do it. <laughs> I didn't want to go there. Uh, so everybody, have a great Friday night. Again, comments, questions, anything that we can help with. Um, 
we're here. Just let us know. We'd be happy to help. Thanks for all of the, the love you guys have been giving us lately. I just, I really appreciate it. And a lot of new subscribers. Uh, for So for you new people, if you need to get a hold of us, you know how to do it. You'll have my email here. Uh, we'll, we'll be happy to help however we can. So everybody have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye.